Baptist of Julia Sheridan and the death of Jesus Christ. May she live in the new life that Christ has won for her and for all who believe in his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This morning to offer funeral mass for Julia. Before we begin our mass, we place the Christian symbols, the symbols of Christian life on Julia's remains. For the book of the Gospels, we remember that during her life, Julia cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. For the cross in baptism, Julia received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Dear friends, we offer funeral mass for Julia and begin doing so by invoking the Trinity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jerry, Nora, Mary, John, Michael, Patrick and Julianne and to all of Julia's extended family, Welcome to this church this morning. Welcome to those who are watching us online and joining us and cannot be here but very much in our thoughts and prayers this morning as we gather to remember, to give God thanks for and to return to him, Julia, our friend, wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, neighbour and indeed very faithful follower of Jesus Christ. When we gather to offer the funeral mass of a loved one, we gather with sadness in our hearts. We gather too with memories that bring us back through happier times. We gather above all in thanksgiving for a life that has been long, full, and blessed in so many different ways, and a life that has brought blessing to so many others. 
some who are here this morning and many others who unfortunately cannot be here. We begin our funeral mass for Julia by inviting ourselves to the Lord's house, to his table, remembering that during our lives, the ties of friendship and affection that are joined and become part of us do not end when we die. Confident that God is merciful, that he is forgiving, let us pause for a moment silently, asking the Lord's pardon and mercy for our sins before his table. And we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie Eleison Kyrie God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for Julia, whom you have called to journey to you. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Invite the readers forward now as we listen to the reading from the Book of Wisdom and the letter of St. Paul. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trusted in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. 
for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd, I not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul he don't restore again and me to walk the way within the path of righteousness in for his own St. Paul to the Philippians. For us, our homeland is in heaven, and from it we await a Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power which enables him even to subject, to subject all things to himself. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to his name. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to his name. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever and the bread that i shall give is my flesh for the life of the world then the jews started arguing with one another how can this man give us his flesh to eat they said jesus replied i tell you most solemnly if you do not eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you will not have life in you anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a moment. Sunday past was the feast of Corpus Christi. It's a feast that is about our past, our present, and our future. Our past. Because the Eucharist, the Mass that we celebrate here this morning for Julia, has ancient roots. It is a ritual that begins its existence in the Old Testament relationship between God and his chosen people. 
At that time, sacrifices were offered to show love for God and to show faithfulness to God, offering up or giving back something of the best of what people had, their livestock or their fruits, recognizing that all things come from God, and giving something back is a way of saying thank you. On Holy Thursday, Jesus left us his body and blood, bread and wine, consecrated, changed to become his real presence with us. Jesus transformed that meaning of sacrifice on Good Friday by giving his life on the cross as the greatest sign of God's love for us. That word sacrifice is one that sometimes makes people a little uncomfortable because sacrifice means giving up or giving away. Nobody knows more about a sacrifice than a mother. She gives away so much of herself, raising her children. She gives away so much of herself in 67 years of faithful married life with Jerry. She has given so much of herself to God in small and great ways. The Eucharist and our present, as Catholics, we believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. The Eucharist that we celebrate here in a moment at the altar for Julia, and present in the tabernacle any time we want to come and visit and pray in the church. When people use the word symbol, they take away from our understanding of real presence. Our faith, Julia's faith, tells us that the host and the wine truly become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, food to nourish us and to nourish our souls on our journey in this present world. Our future. There is a heavenly dimension to what we are doing here this morning in memory and on behalf of Julia. It is suggested to us by Jesus himself in the words of the gospel, where he says, I am the bread of life. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus holds out to us the promise of eternal life. And if we truly believe that he is present in consecrated bread and wine, particularly when we consume them, then our destination when this journey on earth is over must be an eternal future with God in heaven. I said at the beginning that Julia lived a long, full, and faith-filled life. Father Mark spoke with me on Monday about her as a lady of great faith, a lady who was a daily mass goer here over her many years of life. Her devotion to the Eucharist, to the real presence of Christ, was an expression of her deep personal faith. She believed in the real presence of Christ with her in life, in food for the journey, and in nourishment for her soul. And so it became for her the source of hope of one day being with God in eternity. And our prayer this morning for her is that that wish, that desire, that faith is rewarded and fulfilled. Born as the youngest of the 12 of the Regan family, not far from here in Muchwood. She attended school just down the street here in Beliver, and as a young woman, I'm told, worked cooking in one of the big houses in this locality, before herself and Bridie, her sister, headed for England around 1949. It's impossible for us here this morning to imagine the world that she lived in and existed in, the world that she left behind her here at home, the world to which she was headed across the Irish Sea. She soon got work after arriving in Birmingham, and not long after there, herself and Jerry met, I'm told, at St. Chad's. There was no need for a dating app in those days, Jerry, isn't that right? If you went to church, you met a spouse. In July of 1954, at Edgebaston Oratory, they were married and along came their six children, 
sons and daughters, of whom they were very proud. I know that each of you here this morning have your own memories of a wonderful mum, of her love, of her sense of humour, of her great cooking and baking, of her apple pies, of her creative and caring ways and ways of showing that, of her willingness to embrace change and new things, of her fluid rules when it came to playing 25, of her sharp mind, of her love for her garden and for flowers and for nature, of her flair for style and fashion and keeping up to date with what she was wearing. 67 years of shared life is an incredible witness, Jerry, to fidelity, to love, to loyalty, and to generosity. And it gives witness to the rest of us here this morning of what two people can achieve when they put their minds and their hearts together. I hope your witness and your shared example will inspire not only your own six children, but your ten grandchildren, and in turn, the great-grandchildren who are following now. Death robs us of someone that we love, and without our consent, someone who is precious to us is taken from our sight and from this world. But the word of God that we've just listened to this morning puts reassurance before us in the face of all of that pain and sadness. From the Old Testament Book of Wisdom comes the assertion that those who trust in him will understand the truth, those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. Fitting words for the lady in whose memory we are gathered here this morning. St. Paul in that second reading is strong in telling us that heaven is our homeland. It's not our future to be in this world forever. It is our future to be with God. In the face of death, the church into which Julia and all of us have been baptized confidently proclaims that God creates us for eternal life and that Jesus, his son, by his death, by his resurrection, has broken the chains of death and sin that once held humanity. Christ achieved his task of redeeming us by giving perfect glory to God by the mystery of his death, his resurrection, and his ascension to the Father. This morning in faith, as well as in sadness, we entrust Julia to the loving and merciful embrace of Jesus. Tomorrow is the Feast of the Sacred Heart. It's another of those great feasts which reminds us of the immense love that God has for all of us. The love of God is eternal. And when we die, we return to that love. So it is in God's eternal love that we live forever. And it is in the memories and in the hearts of those who remain that our name will not be forgotten. May Julia enjoy the rewards of her faith and her love for God. And may her soul rest in peace. Amen. I invite you now to stand, please, for the prayer of the faithful. And I invite those who are leading us in the prayers to come forward at this time. God, the Almighty Father, has raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, and so with confidence this day, we ask him to save all his people, the living and the dead. We pray for Julia, who has died. May she rest in eternal peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for the medical and nursing staff at Mullingar Hospital, 
and the Mead Palliative Care Team and the Bluebird Home Support Carers that supported Julia throughout this difficult time. Lord hear us. Lord gracious be us. We pray for all Julia's family that they may be given strength to cope with this heavy burden. Lord hear us. Lord gracious be us. We pray for the neighbours, friends and relations who were so good and kind during Julia's illness. Lord hear us. Lord gracious be us. We pray for all of Julia's family, for Jerry, her sons and daughters, her grandchildren, her extended family members, for her neighbours and friends who will miss her, and for all who cannot be with us but join online this day. Lord hear us. And to Our Lady we turn and ask for help and intercession as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers that we offer today for Julia and for all our departed brothers and sisters. Grant them your mercy and grant them fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated again. Gifts of bread and wine, gifts we've offered, fruits of labor, fruits of love. Take sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Julia, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her or any human fault have affected her, it may be your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed and not ended when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. With angels and archangels we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we now acclaim. 
holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with Saint Chad, with your apostles and martyrs and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Tom our Bishop, Michael our retired Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember Julia, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth, he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. We remember Julia's deceased parents, brothers, sisters, and all our departed brothers and sisters too who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give them kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and shall praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As God's family, we stand uniting in prayer in the words that Jesus our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the joyful coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We cannot share a sign of peace, but we pray silently for a moment, first of all, that Julia is at peace with God. And we pray for peace for one another, particularly for her loved ones who will miss her. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the body and blood of Jesus Christ, Corpus Christi. Jesus, who promises eternal life to all who are nourished at his table, blessed are those called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep all of us safe for eternal life. The arrangements for the distribution of Holy Communion, I ask you to remain in your places and Holy Communion will be brought to you. We'd ask you as always please to receive in your hands. Queen of Ireland, all 
Sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacred heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in you. Eternal God, you made the union of man and woman a sign of bond between Christ and the Church. Grant peace and mercy now to Julia, who was united in love with her husband. May the care and devotion of her life on earth find a lasting reward in heaven. Look kindly on her husband Jerry and on her sons and daughters and all her family as they now turn to your compassion and your love. 
We ask you, Lord, to strengthen their faith and to lighten their loss. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before the final prayers of commendation, I want to say a word of sincere thanks to all of you for being here this morning, to those who are joining us online, and thank you to those who assisted with the liturgy, particularly the readers, the prayers of the faithful. My thanks to Nora for her great help in preparing the few words uh, about Julia. Unfortunately, I didn't have the privilege or pleasure of meeting her, but from all you have told me, she was a remarkable lady. And how nice that she has come back home to her place of birth, the beginning and the ending of her life. We pray for one another, and we pray that the Lord will grant you comfort and consolation in the days ahead. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to stand, please, for these final prayers. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Julia. Now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we will see Julia again and enjoy her friendship. And although this congregation will disperse in sorrow and sadness, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. And so, in a moment of silent prayer, we console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. We now sprinkle Julia's coffin with holy water, recalling the day on which she was baptized and became a daughter of God the Father, the sister of Christ, and the carrier of the Holy Spirit. The holy water is also a reminder to us of the promise of eternal life we receive in baptism. We use incense as a sign of reverence for the Holy Spirit who has dwelt within Julia since the day of her baptism, and reminding us too of our prayers rising to God in heaven. Saints of God, come to Julia's aid, hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Julia, may Christ, who has called you, take you now to himself, and may the angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant to Julia, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Julia in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings you bestowed upon Julia in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Julia, 
Help all of us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, we take Julia to her place of rest. But now 